Hello and welcome back to round 13 now. Quicker pace at this point of the tournament. Yep, Especially definitely. after that little time extension in the last <laughs> round. But we're, we'll get there. It, it's hard work. It's a lot of running around. But Man, that was so confusing. Uh, that's uh, that's got to be a first in terms of ruling. That's th like At least on stream. That was, that was an interesting uh, it dilemma was, to have to was. solve. But we are back shortly with the next round. Uh, we have Richard Cherry and Brent Kuzman. Um, two players who... As far as we know, I haven't got any like big regional results. We didn't see any of the limitless database when we had a look. Yeah. Um, so that's not to say they don't, but maybe not in the cash era. Um, but they're playing decks that we haven't really featured. So yeah, can you believe that, guy? guys? It's round 13, and we're showing you decks that you haven't seen yet. I would point out that this th they still play Welder. That's Yeah, they play Welder. And they also play higher energies who would have thought they tend to go to hand in hand <laughs> but the different approaches to things that we've kind of seen so far so we've already seen things like Reshiram Charizard the ability Reshiram version where they are very much focused on using Jirachis and Zenis to set up Richard is opting for the Greens Reshiram build I know he's part of um, a, t a testing group in the UK that kind of prefer the Greens build because of the flexibility and like some of the text you can choose um, and then Brent is playing the Cephalon but the baby version, so the non-GX, uh, which is not something that's widely played. It's normally played uh, just as a kind of one-of in other uh, GX-based fire decks in order to take KOs with the non-GX options if they have to. Um, but I think we're ready now to yeah, jump into the game. Yeah, we're ready to start. The last game ended very late because of that uh, with ruling and the time extension. So we see both players setting up. Um, Richard here playing the Reshiram Charizard Greens version. Um, yep. His prices are decent. Yikes from Brent. Ooh. That is double greens, double Ooh. fire crystal. And so the non GX Persephalon basically functions by having a lot of fire energy in hand, discarding them, and doing damage for each one you discard. But the whole point of this deck is you can kind of loop them using the fire crystals, fiery flints, like you can kind of grab them back and kind of keep your hand full. But it doesn't always work. So we see Richard is starting with Volcanion, um, the kind of ideal starter in this deck, the Flare Starter, helping him set up. Also the High Heat Blast, an early attacking option, uh, if he can get enough energy in play. Actually not enough to KO the Blacephalon straight up, it only does 110 at the cap. Whereas meanwhile, Blacephalon in this deck doesn't really have a damage cap. It's 50, so its main attack will be Fireball Circus, where you want to discard Fire Energy from your hand, 50 for each you do so and with 15 basic fire energy in deck you can you can do some silly numbers very quickly um you know clowning around but oh the issue with that burning your <laughs> opponent so <laughs> we actually straight away see that the richard's actually not playing a if it's a few interesting tech cards um most notably the lugia gx from lost thunder where using the gx attack you can use uh, you can lost zone so like your opponent's big GX that is very set up. So in this deck, if you're up against another big GX a a deck, you might just go, actually, I don't need to take the three prize cards. I might not be able to take the three prize cards. So if I just lost zone six of their energy, well, many decks struggle. That sounds pretty good to me, yeah. honestly. And, you know, against things like uh, the Pikachu Zekrom, you can just kind of just take one of those out. And they only play like nine to 11 energy, depending. And if they don't have enough left to get any other attackers, you win. Um. Yeah, and we see Brent putting that ultra space in play. It ha like it allows him to switch one ultra beast out of his deck every turn. So of course, playing Glazephalon, which is an ultra beast, sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, so he can use this to search out extra attackers. You can also, he's playing a hot one of GX. He's also playing the Feromosa. I be, I can't remember what the Feromosa attack is from Forbidden Light, but I think it has free retreat. And it may genuinely be here as it's a, a searchable free retreater. So yeah, that I think you can we can have pivot. the scan uh, of the Feromosa. Maybe if it becomes become, become, uh, relevant. Yeah. But he does, he has actually got a greens in hand already, which considering he has prized two is pretty, pretty fortunate. Um, would be very Indeed. easy to have none at all. Um, and if that was the case, then you know he can at least chain it for two turns, but now he knows that he can't really afford to chain it. Chaining greens is normally very nice because you can kind of go greens for the thing I want, greens for next turn, yep. and keep that going. But the problem with that is if you only have two greens, you're not getting as much value um, from it. So, yeah, um, it's not 
necessarily as useful. Uh, so the Fremorosa he's playing um, actually isn't going to attack in this matchup. It does 20 damage for one. He can't, you, he can't access the other attacks. Uh, but yeah. it, it is a free uh, retreater, which a suitable free retreater in this format is actually quite rare. A lot of decks last format were playing things like Taku Koko. Mostly because it had free retreat and you could just go, oh, just run away. But it also was up. also super nice because most Plex decks back in the days played DCE and it could of course attack for flying flip with the DCE. 20 spread damage on everything. That was great, but so let's not talk about the old form and yeah, talk about <laughs> what's Brent currently saw happening. Uh, uh, used the greens, and I saw a fiery flint. I didn't catch the other card. We'll see it now. It's a welder. So he's able to next turn uh, welder. He actually opened both of his greens, his two remaining greens. He actually opened both of them. That's uh, very fortunate. Uh, so next turn, he can actually welder, fiery flint, get a fistful of energy, and take a big knockout um, on whatever he needs to. He only needs to discard three energy from hand um, for the Volcanian. And he actually decides not to attach an energy. I mean, he doesn't need to do it now. He can just welder. Because he doesn't know, like, as far as he knows, Richard might be able to retreat, take a KO, and True. then he just loses all the energy and everything from hand. Here he can just attach welder in the same turn and get a guaranteed attacker immediately. And again, if uh, Richard doesn't find the counter stadium, he can kind of just get the next Placephalon and kind of keep ticking over. So a greens from Richard side as well. Uh, yeah, both players playing the greens engine makes absolutely sense if you don't have a lot of abilities or any abilities in your deck. So uh, we'll see what Richard is going to do, uh, going to get with the green. Um, yeah, so it's a fiery flint of his own and a welder. I mean, these two cards go quite well together. Uh, I've heard so. You know, you can just grab a load of energy and then attach a load of energy. That, that sounds not? like a good plan to me. Um, and you effectively kind of go uh, like plus one in terms of cards in hand. I think it, it, the fire energy, unless you attach that one as well manually. So also plenty I of energy. Like but something these decks don't do, right? Well, uh, which a lot of the other decks that play four you copies of Welder, both of these do. Th these decks the don't. Actually, have Please to like they sure can't weld it every turn. So, what we need to do TCG is we need to if kind of greens one turn, so the then next turn welder, greens then welder, greens then welder is the pattern, and that can be awkward because it, I, as soon as the first person uh, gets the welder, gets the pressure on from it, you're really running behind. Uh, Brent, meanwhile, gets the Victini. That's a huge factor in this deck, right? Because you are discarding a load of energy with Fireball Circus. Then later in the game, you just go attach to the Victini, probably welder it. And then you just go, cool, they all go back. <laughs> My life is easy now. I can do it all again. I can just draw more fire energies and win this way. Yeah, the synergy here is pretty obvious. I mean, you throw one them away. One does more damage for discarding energies and the other one does more damage and for energies TCG in your discard pile and then even shuffles them back so yeah online. pretty obvious synergy and, and here we see the welder play TCG attaching players. two energies to the plus epilon this hand is lit with all this fire energy in it it's going to be attached discard His hand three is pretty take hot. the ko and he even has the greens for next turn i yep. wonder when we will burn out of puns uh, not for a while. <laughs> not with you on commentary, dear me. <laughs> uh, so he fiery flints, discards two fire energy, takes four, because why not? You, you're going to want them in the discard pile for later, the Victini. You can discard three then to take the KO on the Volcanian. And we also see Ferramosa hitting the bench. Yeah, it, it's because he's expecting the active Volcanian to either be lost zoned or knocked out. And if that is the case, then the Ferramosa gets promoted. Plus uh, Yeah, the Bicephalon gets KO'd and the Ferramosa then gets uh, promoted. So, enough energy in hand for the knockout. More than enough. Um, yeah, that, that should do the job. Yep. That is uh, one prize got down. It's 150 damage. The Volcano goes down. And now Richard needs to decide what to promote. So um, he's going for the non tag team. Seniors and juniors. Uh, not and quite and sure. No, the, the other one's not the tag team. The other one's the Lugia Jet. So oh, okay. Yes. He's, he can weld her anyway. He's just going to. Double check to see what he wants to use as his uh, attacker. Um, but he can guarantee the knockout this turn. Uh, or he can also loss zone. So, 
you could also use psychic here just attach to the psychic would be more than enough uh does 30 plus 30 more for, uh, damage for the one on each pokemon yeah uh, that should Lost be Purge enough for the damage plus uh, Apollon. well the thing is is that he kind of wants to get a, like a lost purge at some point in this game can actually be really important because if he can take three energy out of the deck brent needs to have all of them to get a ko with the victini later yep. so it's kind of more awkward there is still obviously the beast ring in deck um, which is very important when you're playing these ultra beast decks having that extra 30 damage can make a big difference but we see flint for fire energies getting rid of the rashi ram charizard um, he's playing three copies so Discarding one is fairly fine. He had no intention to use all of them anyway. But the 190 uh, HP from Lugia is actually quite a lot. It's quite awkward to deal with. It has to be four energy in hand. And with seven or energy already in the discard. Six. Six. Should be six. So we go to nine after this knockout. So there is actually a chance that the Victini could be the thing taking the return knockout. Uh, if, you could, if Brent finds a way to discard one more fire energy. And he has a greens, so... Yeah, th no there are there. certainly many okay, ways. So yeah, straight he away. could also just uh, promote... Yep, no. he's just going to loss zone it. Get those energy out <sighs> of there. Because with the Victini as a threat, you don't really want to just put more energy in the discard because it makes your opponent's other attacker even stronger. Of course. But with double greens in hand for Brent, he's going to have to... You can see him counting already going, okay, that's this many energy. We have this many left. What are we going to do? He may be able to take out multiple. Uh, so Richard is probably looking to get like multiple removals of Blacephalons, not necessarily knockouts. He's uh, using the Ultra Space first, checking what he still has on deck. Uh, it always helps to mm -hmm. make sure your math is correct, make sure that really none of your energies are in the prices. Yeah. I think he was just working out how many welder outs, like because he, he has the poker gear, but he doesn't have the energy, so he can just take the. Yep, he's gonna welder and fire crystal for next turn, because then he can just guarantee knockouts. This way, he's playing quite a few energy already, and he can just kind of allow the Lugia to hit into this Feromosa. It's actually not KOing currently, unless uh, Richard wants to at commit another energy. Oh, true. Um, or if Richard has a way to, to retreat, it is also weak to fire. To and there's number quite a lot of fire five, types on Richard's uh, side, side already. Like, you know, the Volcano already deals with it. So, so it's not Yeah, really I've heard so. Fire yeah, decks usually tend to have fire Pokemon. So but uh, let's see what the game plan is now for the Blacephalon deck. Yeah, so. Think. He definitely needs he a welder. Yeah, he can also. There's the manual attachment. Oh, he's. Going for Blaze. Yeah, you could just go for it because you kind of slowly reveal your prize cards, which unfortunately for everyone at home means we lose them. That was a reset stamp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we should keep track. I'm, yeah, I'm taking we, notes we, now. Yeah, we can write that down. Uh, the, 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 the first face up one is a reset stamp. Um, so, ah, because Richard's now behind on prizes by one, he can surge Green's Welder. Um, so, again, not a card commonly seen in these lists. He's only playing it as a one-of. But by playing the one-of uh, Surge, if you do fall behind, and it's slightly slower than the regular ability Reshiram Charizard deck, then when you do fall behind, you can get full value because you can greens for the relevant uh, supporter in Welder and another card all in the same turn. So you can, get, you can get an awful lot of cards out of your deck very quickly. But just deciding what he wants to take. It's a custom catcher and a power plant. Uh, the only uh, shrine of punishment is it? Hang on, no. What did he take? Because he's playing. He's playing a couple. I think is shrine of punishment still in the format. Yeah, I think okay. it was the power plant he took. I, I, I couldn't quite see. I could see it was a stadium from the. I, I mean, we can check what stadiums he <laughs> actually is yeah, playing. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely the sh it's definitely. Oh yeah, he right is one. playing Shrine of Punishment. Yeah, so it, uh, I think that's. Uh, he's uh, also playing Martial Arts Dojo. Oh, okay, he's playing quite a few. Oh, why is he playing so many stadiums? He's made this so difficult. Th those are only two. Oh, he's playing Lysander <coughs> Labs. Yes. And he's Power Plant. Yes. Okay, he's playing four different one-off stadiums. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot of stadium cards. But having a counter stadium here is very nice. He also doesn't know if Brent is playing anything like Dedenne. Um, chances are probably not. This is really a non-GX deck. It wants to be very efficient in the prize trade, and yeah. the Denny's just aren't. 
especially with so many ways of like gusting. You know, Nine Tails just get gusts them up, or like you can snipe the bench against uh, by Mewtwo's. So, yep, more just playing this as a counter stadium to kick the uh, the Ultra Space to. I think he, I think he took a custom catcher. I'm pretty sure he took a custom catcher, and if that was the case, then by taking the custom catcher, he might be going for the other Persephalon. He's I probably Victini. going for the Victini. Yeah, that, that makes, makes more sense. More sense. This basically means there's no way of recovering any of this energy for Brent. And having already lost zone three and six already in the discard, well, actually, there's only six left in deck. That's only a 300 total. <laughs> only. Sure, but <laughs> when you have a 270 hit point um, Pokemon in Restaurant Charizard that can come down, well, how is Rick ever KOing this? That's true. Um, uh, well, uh, and there's also he has to attach two more to the Persephalon, so this really limits the amount of damage that Brent is actually um, has av available. To yeah, him. those those three fire energies in the Lost Zone, they really just try the math. I mean, I'm sure there's a reason why Brent is playing exactly 15 fire energies and no more and no less, and having them in the Lost Zone for sure is suboptimal for him. Well, he still has the fire crystals, though two is still prized. Right, so he still can recover them, but it becomes more awkward. Like he has to like actively use these cards to recover them, just to even get any knockouts. And it, his like one of his better, more efficient attackers is gone. Like the Victini requires slightly less setup than some of the others. Yeah, and the Victini is getting KO'd. It of course goes to the lost zone and not the discard pile. And Brent now. Promoting his free retreater, which is Feromosa. Yeah, you can see he's really clearly trying to keep count of all of his energy cards because he's like, well, if I fire you Flint right now, how many are in deck? Is it enough to get value? Can I afford to discard this? And six, nine in total. So that does mean that there's not many left in deck. And by the time he attaches uh, to Persephalon to get the Persephalon active, he is going to be quite low on them. He is going to need to also hit crystals from the from the welder if he hits the welder this turn. He needs to hit his crystals out of his prices. I think that's a more important point. Yeah, it would be. I mean, he has quite good odds. He knows that to a price. He knows that yeah. one price is a reset stamp, so it's 50-50 to actually hit a fire crystal out of the prices, so that's, that's pretty good, actually. Well, it's actually more than that, right? Because he knows he's prized too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like yeah, fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. So he like he can just gamble on the others, um, and see what happens. So he should be able to see what happens. I don't see if he has. Oh, he, get, he got the welder, okay, and he has the energy for the welder. Yeah. So he's able to. Of course, chooses to take the welder to his hand. Well, yeah, it'd be that or greens, and since he's, we know he's already played two copies of greens, I think, and one's in the prize cards. I think he still has one in. No, he got reset stamped. So. Okay, he's going to have to commit two of these energy to the Blacephalon. He has to draw into at least one more, or an out mm. two or more. I think he got the crystal. No, he got another fiery flint. So there's not many left in deck. Not an awful lot of value. Obviously, Welder being one of the most efficient cards we've seen in the format for a long time, I would go out and say, because it lets you cheat two rules simultaneously <laughs> of drawing cards and attaching energy. And since these are th two things that tend to be good, like a good deck can tend to accelerate energy or draw a lot of cards to yeah. have more options. It's both. It's an insanely strong card. And you can see an attach for, I think, a poke for 20. That so makes sense because that means that uh, with the 20 damage, Volcanion only has 100 HP left. So yeah. the Cephalon will only need to discard two energies to KO the Volcanion. So that's very nice. The high jump kick from Ferramosa. Yeah, the high jump kick makes a very uh, big difference to the uh, numbers. So actually weirdly inefficient attack in this case because <laughs> otherwise Richard is just going to make him discard all of his energy before being able to get anywhere with actual prizing because he's only doing one. <laughs> Brent's probably going, oh, I want one of them. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, as Richard plays the fire crystal. Does he have a welder in hand? He does, so we can actually get re his Reshiram Charizard ready. He knows that like Brent's probably not got an awful lot of energy left in deck and easy access to it, so this Reshiram Charizard, which would require six energy from hand to, to KO, is a big 
big commitment. It is indeed. So you can just take the knockout here with high heat blast if he wants to. He may as well. Any energy that go to the discard are probably lost to the discard pile at this point for Brent outside of his two remaining fire crystal. So it's now going to be a game of which player runs out of energy first, I think. And since we're now at the point where there's a fully pa ch powered pressure from Charizard and the Lugia still that can attack. The Lugia can actually one hit knock, knock out the uh, Blacephalons anyway. So Brent promotes the Blacephalon. He has one energy in hand. Beast Ring, which is live. But oh, it's Beast Ring turn. Yeah, but... Uh, it doesn't really help, Yeah, there's right? not an awful lot of energy left in this deck to Beast Ring, so... <laughs> and the thing is that even if you fire crystals, they just go to hand and not into deck, so... The awkward uh, play around for this is it's not available. A miss on the poker gear. Uh, no welder or greens. That's so sad to witness. But there's another poker gear, so we can have another go. There's also an acrobike. Yeah, I think he's deciding to go for the acrobike first. Ooh. This energy. Yeah, you kind of have to discard that one because at least this then means you can have some damage output, even if it does mean you only have one uh, Blacephalon left. Okay, now he sees a Welder. So with access to the Welder, now he can at least attach when he gets energy in his hand. But this He has one energy in his hand. Yeah. But that I don't know means if he has to, like, uh, you have to attach at least one energy in order to draw the three cards from the Welder, so... I don't know if that's the ideal play. Okay, so this is Brock's Grit. Um, one of in Brent's list. Uh, letting him shuffle combination of Pokemon and energy back into his deck. So it'll mostly be, I think, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's mostly fire energy. He's gone, uh, I've run out of them. Can I have some of those back, please? Decides to shuffle back five fire energies and a... Plazephalon, which absolutely makes sense. Yeah. You, you need that fire energies back. And with the Victini already get being KO'd, there is no other way. But doesn't that mean that the Beast Rings at least set up the Blacephalon on the bench so he can set it up? But he does also still need to find ways of getting energy in hand to take the KO this turn. So is he going to have to fiery flint the Beast? Yeah, he's going to have to fiery flint the Beast Ring so that he can discard three or two energy here, make the manual attachment. And then he will really like to draw a fire crystal, which means he can kind of do it again next turn, but he's going to need a lot of fire energies in hand. I mean, currently, he just doesn't have them. So I assume that that's how his, decks wor his deck works. He always needs a lot of fire energies this in is hand. True. So we better hope his deck is built for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some people refer to as the ability Reshizard as kind of a theme deck simply because it plays, is it 18, seven, 17, 18 energy? 18. Yeah, typically. Like the original this is slightly version? Fewer. Is that what you can call it? Yeah. The original version played 18. Um, but, this new, uh, but this plays slightly fewer, so it's less of a theme deck, but it's aiming for theme deck-like th theme deck -like hands simply because it's going to have a lot of fire energy in them and throw them away. So he, he, got a, he got the crystal. Okay, so he dodged the the rest, makes the attachment. Okay, so we have L Lugia active, is able to take the KO with Psychic this turn. Hits for exactly 120. Uh, 30 more for each on the Blacephalon. So the KO is guaranteed. It's, I think the game oh okay so I've just seen that Richard already has the reset stamp in hand oh. so he can stamp take this KO he's still in the beast ring range but that means that then you need beast rings welders and lots of energy in hand to even get the KO and you'd have to get at least uh, I guess it's four energy in hand to discard and that is still going to be a tall order but I mean he's he's stamping brand to four cards that's not that less no, but it does need a very specific combination of cards to take the KO, and I don't think he's going to see enough cards next turn. As Richard plays a cu cu couple of very quick acrobikes, just thin out some options. The, s the one off fighting energy, kind of irrelevant now because they've already played the fighting dojo, but may as well play it down. And also is going to slightly stamp 
proof himself, so trying to play around the reset stamp. And he's just doing some counting. I think he's just going, right, I can use Psychic. Take yeah. the knockout. He didn't play the stamp there, so he's just leaving the, the hand for Brent. So it's only a four-card hand anyway. Exactly. Oh, maybe he did. I mean, how should he, he know he that he drew a fire, fire crystal out of his uh, prize card? And the you know, I think he has the knockout. I also think so. But he, he has the B-string, he has the fire crystal, he has yeah. the louder. So but he needs <laughs> another basic Pokemon. Yes. This is the thing. Is I think he has the knockout. But, but I'm not I mean, he has sure. no other options than just playing out his odds and hoping to draw into a basic Pokemon from the Welder. Yep. So there's one in deck from the Beast Ring. So there's no fire energy, so... And you see, by the way, he's shuffling and looking ha at his deck. And he's like, no. This is important <laughs> now. <laughs> and so he already has a crystal kind of Welder single draw. Don't Acrobike. There's okay. an Acrobike. Okay, so he has... We have one more odd. Yeah. Acrobike. Ooh. Nope. Nope. Oh, no, wait, it's fine, because he has the Heat Factory, so he can actually Heat Factory here, because he has double Fire Crystal oh, in true, hand, yeah. so he can uh, play the Heat Factory and try and draw a few more cards to see if he can get to the next basic. He gets oh. it. Okay. On the dig, he gets it on the last card. Otherwise, even taking the KO wasn't going to get him anywhere. But this is his last two fire crystals he has access to. Yeah, the one will probably be his last prize card. Um, unless he wants to take the reset stamp now uh, and reset stamp down to three. But he's gonna be he's gonna struggle to take the KO on the Reshiram Charizard as well now. I mean, the Reshiram there, there's a Lugia. It already has ten damage. Th they are irrelevant. Yeah. So. So yeah, here the Reshiram Charizard comes in, takes the guaranteed knockout in return. But at the same time, Richard has no second attacker, so slightly awkward from his side. Palpad, that was a green and a welder. So give himself some options. Very thin deck as well, already. These these decks with welder, drawing three cards every turn. What four cards with your with your top deck is uh, pretty good, and then why would you not like to shuffle the Brooks Grid back in? Um, because at this point you haven't got many op draw options to draw through the fire. Like you ha I think he's used his fire crystals now, so uh, his fi his fiery flint. Sorry, so mm. he hasn't got any ways of like getting them out of deck. And this turn, if Rick does take the KO, he's outside of Beast Ring. Yeah, again, we so see a fiery fire crystal being played. Okay, so he gets the next the fire next crystal. Knockout. Okay. That's actually huge. Okay, so there's a custom catcher. That means he has two fire crystal in hand now. Yes, so double fire crystal, but he doesn't have a welder, so he has to hope that the welder from comes from this uh, poke gear, and then he might be able to to steal. He does I mean need he draw six. He, he does draw a card for turn. Then he can still use the um, heat factory to draw some more cards, and his deck looks pretty thin at that point so yeah. I think his odds are pretty good so yep Rick going okay right reset stamp down to two <laughs> Brent taking one last look at the double cri uh, crystals <laughs> going well we nearly got there <laughs> but this this is now going to be a very hard to KO to take two card hand uh, probably tempting from Rich Richard's side to... I mean, Richard was holding on to the reset stamp. So yeah. He was probably tempting from his side to maybe take the... Uh, to kick the stadium, because it just means that Brent has even less outs. But... I mean, if you go for the reset stamp, you are almost forced to take the stadium away from him, because... Oh, he doesn't... I don't think... The thing is, is that I think the only thing he has in hand to uh, kick the... Would, would have been Shrine of Punishment. And then but th with the two between turn ticks it would take with the 10 dam... Uh, did he use the stadium himself? Uh, he did not, but I don't think he necessarily felt the need to. He wants to just take the KO. I mean, he could have digged for a uh, counter stadium, though. Yeah, this is true. He could have tried to find something. I think he had, um, he had the Shrine of Punishment, but then th that means it's only five energy, not six energy. And that's somewhat easier. So single stamp. That's true. That's the, the, the Blissephalon GX, which is no good here. But... Yeah, we see Countercatcher being played for the first effect to draw one card. Now we see Pokegear. Yeah, Pokegear trying to find well, kind of anything. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, there are options, but... There are lots of options. But it's got to have to be the greens, right? Because if it's not the greens, 
then he, what, what good is Welder right now? Absolutely none. So he kind of has to take the greens. Greens, search for the two, probably two of the cards that he saw in there going, for, like, oh, there's three crystals available to him. Cause of, um, yeah, he drew the last one out of his prices. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And just trying to work out how he's going to try and steal this game. I, I think going for double costume catcher is fine because then he can, like, put the rush from Charizard without the energies into the active position and he yeah, but it does then knows mean that Richard doesn't have the best hand. But it does then mean a welder double attach retreat is a KO because currently there's no way for uh, well so if, if Brent doesn't attack Richard isn't taking the KO next turn because he can't use um, Flare Spike again right so he can't use Outrage or he can for 30 damage but that's not really getting him anywhere yeah. so Brent needs to be able to take the KO. Okay, um, so we the see. Fire crystal? Yeah, we see one of the fire crystals. Oh, there's also a Blacephalon GX in his hand. Heat Factory. Okay, the Welder for next turn is fine, but no good right now. And is he going to double custom catcher? I mean, yeah. if he doesn't, he loses it. That, like, he could bend. Uh, no, he no, he doesn't lose because he. Um, so the Reshiram Charizard can't actually attack with anything meaningful because it's used Flare Strike to hit the KO. Oh, true. And you already used the GX attack much earlier with the Lost Purge from the Lugia, so the Outrage is the only option. And providing Richard, like Brent doesn't swing into the uh, Reshiram Charizard and try and take the KO, or like set up for a two hit knockout, then it's actually okay here. So it's just going to be. I'm just checking the uh, switching options that Richard has. But one switch. He plays one switch. Yep. I don't know if he has used it already or not. He may well have done. It uh, at least doesn't look like he has it on his hand. So no, I can see Cherish Ball. Huh. Double Life Herb. <laughs> um, which in the trading of big one-hit knockouts that this game has been, the, the Life Herb is pretty dead. Because Kay. Brent always aims for one hit KOs. It makes no sense to leave damage on a Pokemon that has an attack, like an outrage attack. That's that's just overall a bad idea. So, so Cherish Ball for nothing, but does get to give Richard a good look at what options he has still in deck. There was a copy of Lusamine, I think I saw. Let's take a look. Is it yeah. Uh, so he can kind of loop um, a few of the supporters around if he wants to, so he can get extra welders. And since he's playing Surge, going Surge into Lusamine into Welder is a, vi is a viable uh, turn. Just retreats. The <laughs> Richard's turn was a bit quicker. Uh, just retreats into the uh, GX for the Cephalon, who he needs uh, and. Just a quick poke for 30 from Outrage. Um, no extra damage. Yeah, and now we see uh, the energies from the Fire Crystal. <laughs> and I... <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, I mean this is basically, if, 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 if I play this Welder, I have no deck. <laughs> if I play this Welder and I'm not taking the KO, I lose. But, I mean, he could also just play Welder for one energy to the Placephalon, and then... You may as well put them all on the Persephone. Yeah, active. that's true, that's true. So he can hit for 250 this turn. Okay, oh. there's one left. Okay, I miscounted. And he has still one attachment, right? Yep, so that's 200. But then if he does this, then Richard just goes Outrage for game. Uh, removes the Heat Factory. Uh, the pile of cards in the <laughs> Lost Zone right now is pretty large. Uh, so he needs to go for double custom catcher now, right? I think he has to. Yeah, double custom catcher. Oof. I mean that. <laughs> Single attach, go mind blown. Or burst. That makes no sense. Forget about that. He's. <laughs> oh. No, no, it does because so the damage from the burn can potentially mean one less. Thing so it's healed, and so uh, the burn counter is immediately re uh, removed. Um, but 
now it's sorted so that he's able to retreat if he yeah, can get the I energy mean, It makes sense. I mean, you don't want to get the damage on there. You kind of yeah. The thing is, is that this now means that he can't really be knocked out. But I need to. I'm trying to work out if there's any viable option to. Okay, so the poker gear to pick up the deck. Always nice. Yes, one Lusamine, please. Does he have a way to retreat for next turn? The fact that he managed to heal the damage is actually really big. Is he playing anything like a Titan Lizer that he might want to grab? Nope. Uh, so the Lusamine to grab. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you want to yeah. grab? It'd be a welder. It's probably a welder. Greens. It's a greens. Okay. We were so wrong. There were literally only two options. Okay. And the dojo. Um, I don't know if this helps the maths. I have got another fighting energy. Or is it just to kick the stadium again? I think it's more to kick. Heal. Remove the status condition. This makes Pass. two energies. Two energies that he needs. Okay. But there's the fire crystal and the welder. Yeah, the fire so crystal welder. I think he's asking if he can play the welder, if he can't draw cards. Uh, I believe it's attach, then draw. Yeah. So you do so as much as you can. And that is enough then to <laughs> make a very large Mind mesephalon. blow <laughs> the opponent away. Yeah. Going a little bit overboard <laughs> with the number of energy <laughs> on a single mesephalon. Normally you'd spread those around a little bit more, but <laughs> I mean, why not kind of style on your opponent when you get to take such a big knockout for uh, the game? A uh, really interesting uh, game, that one. Kind of very back and forth. Um, there were a few turns where if Richard had ha had access to an extra switching option, he'd have been able to kind of switch the Reshiram yeah. Charizard around and take a KO, but they weren't available. And as a result, uh, Brent managed to steal game one from kind of a slow start. Like, didn't really yeah, get set I up. Yeah, really, I really felt like the they, they started really, really slow. And it took some time to, for me at least, to actually understand the matchup and what the, their strategies and their approaches were. So well, that uh, was an interesting game to watch for me. It was very interesting because uh, you could tell that straight away Richard targeted out the Victini and basically yeah. went, right, okay, I'm going to make you use your crystals to get all these energy because if you can just weld it into them because you keep shuffling them back into your deck via the uh, Victini, well, keep shuffling, do it once. Um, but it's still enough to cause problems. And that very early meant that you could tell Brent was really having to try very hard to manage his energy attachments in his, uh, in his commitment versus kind of doing what the deck really wants to do of just kind of idly throwing a load of energy into the discard pile then putting them all back and then doing it again and, you know it made it an awful lot more difficult for Brent to, to, to close the game out. Definitely but in the end he was still able to manage uh, to win the series uh, I definitely didn't expect that like, after the Victini got KO'd and he had to discard so many fire energies that early, I was very skeptical if he was still able to swing the game around. Mm -hmm. But I completely underestimated the power of the fire crystals. And, of course, he also was quite lucky just, uh, like, ca catching them out of yeah, the prices. Yeah, that, that is true. And yeah, speaking of prices... That is quite a few energy prizes for Richard. Oh, yes. Uh, not the best way to start the game. Um, he's playing 15. Oh, no, no, he's really playing 11. He's playing 11, so... But that's also one fighting energy. Yep, so that's the one they fighting energy for the martial arts dojo. So, slightly lower on energy. Brent getting himself set up. Yeah. He, he has a basic, found basic Pokemon. but it is the GX, which he really doesn't want to be opening I mean, you can with. start with, uh, what's it called, Burst GX? Yeah, sure, take the one prize. Th that's not, not the worst. Ooh, three Acrobat and oh the Victini Prism dear. surprise. Oh, Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> this, is, uh, <laughs> this is a little bit awkward because <laughs> potentially giving up two prize cards early with the Blacephalon and the Acrobikes aren't necessarily key to the deck but they may help it run so much more consistently and Victini is key. But actually, like, key. in case he draws the prize cards just as they are displayed here, that would mean that if he attacks with Burst GX, he actually hits into the fire energy. That's true. And then constantly draws into an acrobat, which isn't too bad either. Yeah, that's kind of true. Like, he can take them out of the prize cards. It, that's kind of how he got uh, fortunate last game, is like taking the fire crystal out of the yeah. prize cards the turn he did. 
So that's important here. The, the Victini being one of the last prize cards is going to be super awkward because he's going to have to try true. and save a welder in some way, shape, or but form. But we have seen that his deck is very able to cope not having the Victini available to him. So I'm still quite positive. L overall, like seeing how the last game went, I would say that Brand is definitely favorite in that matchup. Yeah, so meanwhile we see a quick greens from Richard, Cherish Ball, Fiery Flint, get rid of some of the stadiums that he doesn't want. I think he has two in his hand. Yep, the power plant. He's now realized that it's not helping anyone in this matchup. Yep. And the Shrine of Punishment is actively hurting him in this matchup. <laughs> That's very true. I mean, right now in this situation, it would hurt his opponent more than him, but at the end of the day, it probably hurts himself more, so... So... Full fire energy from the deck with the Fiery Flint. Right, we see an attachment to the active. Or to the bench. Yeah, the Restaurant Charizard is ready. Can start taking KOs fairly quickly. Okay. What are the options on Brent's side of the board? Crystal. Yeah, you can see him kind of putting his hand together. Like, okay, what, how do I order this? We're going to greens. So this is probably for an ultra space. Or something like that to try and get the, the non-GX for Cephalon. And potentially Welder for next turn. He's just yeah. also do just double checking his counts. I you can see him very deliberately going, well, these are supporter cards, these are good cards, I need these ones. Yeah, it looks like he's checking his ultra spaces, his welders, his fire, uh, fire crystals. Those are all the key cards in the deck, so obviously during your first search, you always check your key cards. You want to make sure everything you need is in your deck, or at least be informed about what you don't have available yeah. to you. So here he's actually going to chain the greens for a couple of turns, because he knows that he has all of them available to him, so he can go th Ultra Space into greens. He can just attach, probably GX attack this turn, take the, uh, the quick, easy prize, and also attach to the Bocephalon. Uh, and that then means that he's actually very close to threatening KOs, because like, if he takes one prize with the GX attack here, and can find a way of... D is he playing uh, Custom Catches? I assume so. Yeah, yes, he, he is. We've catches. seen them last turn, um, last round. Yeah, so he's if he get hits the Custom Catches, he can actually take out... like. Very quickly have enough energy in play for Mind Blown to just start dealing with he's everything. Yeah, and the he's attaching the energy, he's and, and the of course he doesn't know what we know. Yeah. Ooh, his hand is hovering. Huh? Okay. Do yourself a favor, I mean, boy. the other option here is basically just to burn for 20. And he hits the energy. <laughs> Very nice. Gets the energy onto the blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> Rick's face was like, great, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> that actually is a really big deal. That extra attachment here is like half a welder, right? <laughs> and look at Brand. He looks so happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I high rolled that. He probably didn't even count his energy. He was like, there's probably one prize. Like, I play it enough. There's probably one prize every game. Oh, look, I found it. <laughs> Yeah, we see Richard also going for greens on his first turn. That's of course a th that's the engine in the deck. That's why you call it Rushy Greens. Yeah, Richard's uh, Greens Exploration. Really interesting card because I, like it's very powerful because of the fact that you have this search option, but the deck restriction of not playing things with abilities in a format where there are so many strong abilities is actually a really good trade-off. So the fact that these decks even still work just shows how good both the abilities are in the ability builds, but the greens value is in the greens uh, builds. So, going to go for the Lugia this time from a Cherish Ball. Um, probably g going for the same game plan of, well, if I can GX attack one of the, uh, maybe, Blacephalons into, uh, into the Lost Zone, it's fine, right? Like, if we throw them away, that's three energy gone. That's three energy less he has to work with. We're going to make him work to get these energies uh, in play. Attached to the active Volcanion um, to use the Flare Starter. Attach an energy from the deck to the Reshazard. Almost as good as first GX. Almost. Basically did the same thing without using the GX tech. I'd say it was better. <laughs> deck thinning everything. <laughs> but, but you don't get a drop price card. This right? is true. Um, but meanwhile, okay, there's double custom catcher. Uh, is custom catcher in hand? I see one. 
Okay. So he's just going to discard it for the Fiery Flint, I think. Ultra Space first. Yeah, you may as well. Always use Ultra Space first. Yeah, that's actually really unfortunate that uh, Richard wasn't able to kick the stadium immediately. By kicking the stadium, it would kind of stop the value from snowballing from Ultra Space. It's one of those, it's proactive, you get to use it on your turn you play it, but it is also more than that because it's kind of a cumulative value. Every single turn you get to search and kind of build up a, a board. Yeah, it's also nice if you have a constant option to search your deck because it it makes it way easier for you to keep track of what you still haven't used, what's still in your deck. You get to see your deck more often, so you always gain more information. And at some point, you just know all your price cards, and uh, that's that's pretty good. So a quick Fiery Flint from Dragon's Majesty. Uh, the kind of small set that we had last year that only had a couple of cards really make a big impact, Fiery Flint being one of them. Um, so searching for four energy from the discard uh, from from the deck, really efficient deck thinning, right? That's very true. Uh, discard four two cards, cards of, out of your and deck. four gone. It's just like so he like Richard uh, like Brent has just taken six cards from his deck this turn, which then means that very quickly your top decks become better and better value. Welder, of course. Attaching to Blissephalon DX. Preparing for a mind blown, probably. He, he's got to be careful when he times the mind blown, right? Because if he mind blowns and lost owns too many energy, he knows his Victini's prized. If Rich is then able to lost own even more energy, he just can't recover them. Like the That's Lugia, true. the Lugia in hand for Richard is is genuinely a threat here. That's true. We will see what happens. I mean, he can. But also, take a l little look at the t how long is left on the timer. There's, oh. uh, there's not a lot long left in this uh, That's game. That's true. So, okay, I'm just going to take the knockout. He decides to mind blow away three energies. That's 150 Trading damage, and that's for sure enough to KO the Volcano. So only Trading four prizes left for Brent. So I could see something like attach reset stamp being a nice uh, line for Richard here because he can just GX to take two prizes of his own. Mm-hmm put his opponent down to four hand cards and leave him like looking for ways to get energy uh, again. That's kind of like when you're up against the, the Bicephalon deck, you need to get them into positions where they just don't have easy access to energy every turn. You have to make them work for it and burn more of their resources. So, quick word with the players, I think. Is, we um, see a welder. Into another welder, always nice. That's true. We see reset the reset stamp. stamp. Yeah. And you may as well just go for the attack here. Of he may want to. He may actually be tempted to uh, player strike because he might want to still keep the Lost Purge as an option to lost zone more energy. I mean, currently it makes no sense, sense because he doesn't lost zone any energy. Exactly. And sacrificing two custom catcher for only one prize and one energy that would go into the lost zone is not really the best deal. Uh, it, it would be in response to this uh, Reshiram Charizard getting knocked out. Would be the play is if he lost zones a load of energy um, on the Blissephalon that comes active. But, and then there'd be a lot of energy in the discard pile. And it, it just gets more awkward uh, for Brent. But I'm not entirely sure he wants to go for that. I think he's just going to try and take the KOs because he knows that there's not long left on this round. In fact, uh, the, mate, like the rest of the event is already in time. Yep. We still have a few minutes left. But you know, there's a, there's a few turns left in this game. So the Feromosa for Brent, knowing that probably having something knocked out this turn. Uh, Beast Ring is active for him. True. So he can actually pull out a load of energy this turn to get double attackers set up. But you know what? In order to play Beast Ring, you need to have it in your hand. Yeah, it does help. Drawing cards tends to be a good good feeling. I think he <laughs> hit triple welder on that uh, <laughs> Poke Gear. Um, that, that's a start. Whenever I do that and I get like multiple, I always take the one that was like lowest on the pile. I was like deepest into the deck to kind of go, oh, I only just hit it. <laughs> <laughs> try and tilt my opponent a bit. <laughs> it's just really weird. Um, but he instead, um, just t takes the world. He has an energy. Those are pro trips from <laughs> Mr. Connor here, were you? They're really not. <laughs> <laughs> They're really not. Um, so, has the welder double attack? So he can attack this turn. Should he want to? But he does need to get more energy in hand to do anything oh. relevant with them. He gets three from that. So he. 
you're going to probably just use the first attack of the Bicephalon. I'm not uh, quite sure what it does. Uh, flip, that's the oh, one that flips yeah, the fire start, right? And you... That's it. Uh, it does more damage if it's an energy. Okay. I think. Uh, I think it's 10 plus 30 for... 10 plus 50, I think. Might well be. I, uh, I don't remember. But either way, flips over one of the acrobikes and goes, Wait, there's another one of you in here? <laughs> I just took one of you. <laughs> and... Yeah, I mean, no, having information about your prize cards is pretty good. Back in the days when town map was <laughs> the thing. Yeah. It has seen so far. We, we know a certain Mr. Schultz. <laughs> uh, he rather enjoyed that card. <laughs> Literally any deck. I, I know another Mr. Schultz yeah, who actually won Worlds with that yeah. card. <laughs> um, so great potion. Counter Stadium. So healing the small chip damage that was done by Brent uh, last turn. Yeah, um, and we see the Russian Charizard actually using the DX attack. Yeah. Which takes away the threat of Richard taking more fire energies into the last zone, so uh, Brent is now safe <laughs> for that. <laughs> Brent was like, cute, nope. I'll just face. <laughs> I've got my own. We're going to get another Bicephalon down. And kind of gets himself set up. Um, now he needs one energy to attach, and then six. Six energy from hands. Uh, I mean, we know he can get some of this because he has the attachment from hand. He has the reset stamp. I think he also has a custom catcher. I and mean, custom catcher is. We can draw two cards. Two cards? Yeah. He has another energy in hand. Okay. Okay, so okay. So two energy in hand. It's not six. And a fight. Is that a fire reflect? Yeah, but that's no good because you discard two energy to, yeah. to get four energy. Um. So he's not taking a KO this turn. But he, he could attach the energy he and has. use high jump. Oh, true. Um, so he's just going to commit all the way into this. Get the, I think that's, yeah, oh. all, all of his oh. remaining fire energy from deck. It, it makes sense. I mean, you thin out your deck a little bit, and then the probability of actually drawing into the fire crystal is a little bit higher. Yeah. And looking at the clock. Yep. Time is ready to get called. And it's time. Yeah, so time has been called during Brent's turn. He is now turn zero. With so fiery flint. He's got four of the six. So he's just going to go, okay, we can we win? The answer is yes. He's taking three prize cards on in the nec next knockout. That Later tends to be enough. Sure yep. uh, and but I think they're just trying to work out if there's actually a way of uh, winning or... So question from from Rick, I think. Uh, yeah, I, mean I think it's about an attachment. I think is the is the question. Is no, I think Richard, the Richard has just realized that he himself is not able to win because he only has two more turns yeah. and three more prizes, and there's no way for him to actually draw two more prizes. Bench out. I mean, I know there's an ultra space in play, but bench out. Win but, by but how? He has only two attacks. Oh yeah, this is true. So there's yeah, genuinely no way of him winning right now. Yeah. Um, there is no way for him to take the remaining prize cards. He only has two turns. He's just going to uh, draw for turn. Can't attack. Turn one. Yeah. Takes the KO. Oh, he, you know he jacks, so he can <laughs> he can flare strike for 460. Um, which is just a little bit more than the Pheromos' uh, 110 HP. Yeah, we see Ultra Space. Yep. Ultra Space. We are another Bicephalon. Of course. You can thin a, a card from the deck every single turn. Oh, greens. you drew into greens. Uh, this could be a crystal to take the remaining energy yeah, required. This will for sure be a and crystal. And probably double crystal, actually. Or crystal and brooks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, crystal, crystal greens is also fine to guarantee because you can get double crystal next turn True. to do it, um, and you can actually win as opposed to not lose. In this case, even the Brent is already I mean it means the same. Yeah, in this case, it's, it's, it's the same, the same result. As yeah, and you actually can't win. Yeah. He will take three prizes. It's he's turn two, so. Yep, and um, Rich is just like that. That's that'll be game because you take the knockout here. I have nothing, and you have another attack. So Brent does win that 2-0, uh, moving on to 8-0-5, um, which is not quite. I think I think we were, uh, was having a chat with the others earlier on. I think Bubble will be 31-ish. I am not quite sure, but so I've heard that there's a website 
called limitlesstcg.com. You can look it out. And they have a Swiss calculator where you so can actually check out how many points you need. Should, it was nice seeing one of the non-GX decks win. Yep. They have a huge advantage against those tag team GX and GX decks in general because they, like, they give less prize cards. Um, but because we were already again <gasps> in timeout yep. and <laughs> we I are delaying the whole game. tournament. <laughs> we'll go to a very quick break, and we will be back uh, very soon.